been in the country to open schools most of the time has been because people say, look at what is happening to the girls. But how can we really make schools the safe haven for the children who have families? Really, what is happening to our families? Meanwhile, the Minister of State for Primary Education, Kaduku, dismisses social media posts on reopening schools. She explained that open places like churches and markets are safer than closed places. The pressure of stay in one place matters. In the church, you take one hour, at most two or three hours. But here in the classroom, this child sits in the same seat from morning up to four in between breaks and lunch break. If this teacher is not vaccinated, the same te another teacher comes, another one comes, another one, and the children are seated. So I think that question is really, really not logical enough. And unfortunately, the Minister of State for Higher Education, Dr. John Chrysostom Moyengo, attended the press briefing and shed light on funds offered to private teachers by government. I the quality of education we give. When a message goes out that we have disorganized, we have failed it, even to organize ourselves into an association, it's terribly embarrassing. You organize us, the teachers. Mm. Instead of having this money to be politicized, it, the teachers know. are suffering. Mm. This disorder is not acceptable. Mm. Paul, if you fail to organize the teachers, call me, I'll help you. I'm Nafka Farida and Abdul Nasir Wama in Kampala. In more news, the regional manager Uganda Revenue Authority stationed at Motukula border post Godson Mwesije is decrying the trade imbalance between Tanzania and Uganda. However, the first Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for East African Community Affairs, Rebecca Kadaga, pledged to engage her counterparts from Tanzania over the same. According to Ugandan authorities operating at the Motukula border with Tanzania, at least 200 trucks containing rice enter Uganda on a daily basis. This is to the disadvantage of Ugandan traders dealing in the same product. We appreciate that our sister country is feeding us with rice. But at the same time, our farmers, our peasants, especially in eastern Uganda, are crying. Unfortunately, 74 rice dealing companies from Tanzania are said to be exempted from taxes, which makes Ugandan traders more disadvantaged. Rice Traders Association. This, among others, is one of the concerns that was carried forward as first Deputy Prime Minister Rebecca Kadaga arrived at Mutukula border point. And it is a pain to a patriot who sees when you promote East African community and you see trade imbalance that is happening at this border, you can cry, Mama. Traders are being able to see Ingira, Ziva Tanzania. As every day, I'm seeing Ingira, Ziva Tanzania. Neka sorry, neka sorry, empeke, Ava Tanzania. It is on the basis of these concerns that some traders are requesting for more land to attract more local farmers and traders into the business. Mobitu nonga hoima. Mobitundo nga ebugerere kushikusho azilale ke Victoria mobitundo nga elira eyo nayo natu akola researching omchere gudda these concerns and appeals caught the attention of right honorable kadaga who is also the minister for east african community affairs and it's a matter i intend to take up before the end of october i'll be going to tanzania to meet my counterpart tanzania revenue authority the ministers of trade and of agriculture so that we can deal decisively with this issue of trade imbalance. This intervention, according to Kadaga, will not be limited to only rice, but other products. We have already heard that the, 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 the rice is very, very high. Almost everything comes from Tanzania, but there's nothing we're selling to them. So all our money is going to Tanzania and nothing is coming inside. So we're going to, uh, to address that. It is reported that Uganda can only meet 6% of the country's demand for the rice products. This could perhaps be the reason why 62% of rice imported into the country 
comes from Tanzania. Henry Okrut, UBC. Thank you, Henry Okrut. Now, the Karama Jongs have been urged to embrace peace by surrendering illegal guns. This was during a security meeting where UPDF officers displayed eight guns recovered from LDU that deserted the forces in Kabong district recently. The Minister for Lands, Judith Nabakova, continues combing different parts of the country to mediate into pending and forceful land evictions. At this meeting held at Chidadiri village, Nyenga Sabu County, Njeru municipality, local leaders in the district were given the first chance on the floor. Minister, Land Committee. Si politika nde tekniko na babe nyigira mkusawa amataka. Physically never laba nga babe na mfili dibize. Mchifocho wa kusensitizing abantu. Mufune na fetufune. Bongo laba politishiani ye ya kukute bari bari. Obuzi vwatu wa funda wa nesawa zinu. Land body ya fe ne ye mkono. This year, over 20 LDUs deserted the UPDF and ran away with government guns, a situation that has worsened insecurity in the district. However, in the last two weeks, the situation has normalized. Statement by our political leader at district level, the sub county level, they went out and we were able to engage the 20 deserted LDUs to bring back the gun. As I speak now, Honorable Minister, we have recovered nine guns out of the 20, which is an achievement. For various stakeholders, including the action of His Excellency the President, that directed that security be built up in the district and in the region. Security currently in Carbon is to some extent calm. Over 10 guns have so far been recovered from the deserters, as Brigadier General Joseph Balikudembe explains. The community to mobilize the leaders and they accepted to go down and hand down these LDUs to return the guns. And this has taken us for one week and a half to get these guns. We still have more guns to the LDUs and we hope they are going to bring the guns and these ones as examples. Leaders in Kabong district now want government to compensate those that lost their livestock and alternative livelihoods for ex-warriors. Over 48,000 animals. We lost about 22,000 cows, about 21,000 sheep and goats, about 500 donkeys to raise. We are appealing to the government to at least do something about it. To be in the form of compensation. They are returning these guns. What do we have for them? I know there have been a lot of questions inside Karamoja over the appreciation we give. The senior minister for Karamoja, Dr. Mary Gorete Chitutu, urged Karamojongs to embrace peace as it will lead to development of the region. I asked for him to give me money to construct valley dams in every parish. He said that is no problem. The money will be given, but just give us the peace that we need in Karamoja, and you will see what we can do here in Karamoja. If we have peace, then there will be development. The State Minister for Karamoja Affairs, Agnes Nandutu, now wants all warriors across Karamoja to surrender their guns to the UPDF as the window for forgiveness is still open. Assuring them that amnesty is still available, they should not fear, let them come hand over the guns, and the government is going to settle them. We are giving them food, we shall give them iron sheets. Later, recovered guns were displayed to the ministers. <laughs> This was during a community security baraza held at Kabong district grounds and also addressed by the State Minister for Ethics, Akelo Rose Lily, State Minister for Disaster Preparedness, Esther Anyakun, Kabong district leaders, officials from OPM, UPDF, police, and members of the community. Since the operation, Salam Kwawote, started this year, 96 guns have been recovered, 12 of which from Kabong district. Yeah. 
In more news, the Minister of Lands, Housing and Urban Development, Judith Nawakoba, has ordered for the arrest of the Secretary Wikwe District Land Board following reports of fraudulent land transactions in the district. Now flanked by the State Minister Office of the Vice President, who also doubles as Wikwe, a woman member of Parliament, and Diana Mutasing, where Minister Nawakoba also caused the closure of the Lands Office in the district. The Minister for Lands, Judith Nabakoba, continues combing different parts of the country to mediate into pending and forceful land evictions. <laughs> at this meeting held at Chidadi village, Nyenga Sub County, Njeru Municipality, local leaders in the district were given the first chance on the floor. Minister, <laughs> Land Committee. Si politika nde tekniko na bobe nyigira mukusaba amataka physical ne balaba nga babera mu field bize mu kifo cyo kusensitizing abantu mufune na fetu fune bongo laba politician ye ya kukute bali bali obuzi bwo twafunda wane sawa zino land body ya fe ne ye mukono e ye mukono ne sawa zine cyane ne takari ye ye gaba wano mbuyukwa ne nga bakozeso rukujukuju Ntiboye bali yali waguru ku center residents then supplemented Kadija 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 echo kubiri ye surveyor wa district yo nakato echa pa chifuru machitianga ROC yo butuze bwa kuno techi manyiko bo wabanga ebintu tebyatambula bulunji echi singa ebyapa bisazibwemu abantu abereku bafune ebyapa ebitufu the meeting had moved on swiftly, not until when Minister Nabakova sought for clarification from the District Land Board Secretary, Hadija Sebiala, over the allegations. Though she was invited in time and briefed about the meeting, the secretary's explanation was lacking in many aspects. Honorable Minister, Fetch to Sava Hajat, Kabaku Fugavan Mangu Mangu, Nakukumi Desimo, I called you, remember? And you told, I told you to come with all the documents. However, Hadija's continued miscommunication led to her arrest. Fire of Akuburi, that's it for your aga. No county to money, a chat a chap, a simony, or a jetty, a tech at Chirimucono, a tetchy week, a tetchy in Jeru, our Chira Gantia, the Aino Kudam. Navacoba also called for the closure of district land offices as well as directing police to carry on investigations. Munziki is a sitter of Chicola. Neok Sinzira could be end up your Sinzira could have yet one more hajati. End up suspending a transaction for three weeks. District Land Board. For three weeks. Tuwa gala wabe woku no nyeleza. Okuwa wenkanya. Mungeri etakalino. Jeri agabuamu. Atera. Bwechina azuli buanga wali wo. Eye kovana. Okubela antienyi gira mivuyo. Ejo kugaba. Etakalino ya public land. Bavunani we. The minister's visit to the district was after several complaints forwarded to her office by the district woman MP, also minister for vice president's office, Diana Mutasingwa. Robert Onyango, UBC News. Thank you so much, Robert Onyango, for those details and for that wonderful story on land transactions in Buikwe. In more news, health workers in Kisoro District have laid down their tools over alleged delays to pay their salary arrears of three months. Under the umbrella body of Uganda Nurses and Midwives Union Association, Kisoro District, District led by Martin Havana, uh, have promised not to work unless their demands are met. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Health workers in Chisoro district have laid down tolls over their salary areas of three months under the umbrella body Uganda Nurses and Midwives Association. Chisoro district health workers laid down their tolls following delays by government to clear their three months areas. The ranch allowance from July, August, September, we have not received. Yet on our pay slip, that money is, is showing that we have received the money. Under the umbrella body, they have threatened to continue the industry until their demands are honored. Because it is our right, it is not even a privilege. We, need, we deserve our payments, we deserve them, and if we are not given, they should, there should be a clear explanation. According to Ronald Ashakimana, the chairperson of the association, the workers have been patiently waiting for their salaries and allowances since July this year. They have also decried poor working conditions and low remuneration. This is dangerous. We are having it. We need our money. We are having it. Which have not around. It's not a mistake. Which have not around. The department has not communicated anything. So we are wondering from July up to today, people are just taking us for granted. The resident district commissioner Chisoro, Captain Peter Mujisha, together with the chief administrative officer, told the workers to be calm as their issues are being handled. You give it to him through your DHO. through the DHO, then he will find the answers. Yeah? And the human resource will also get the, get the, get the answers of exposing Manyayowa. They have advised them to wait a little as the Minister of Finance and Public Service harmonize in a month's time. No, so when the financial year started in July, the decision to pay you increased lunch allowance was not taken. Is that true? Yes. Chisoro district has about 646 health workers in government facilities. Story compiled by Katia Tuzarire for UBC News. Now, interestingly, the state minister for ICT and national guidance, Joyce Nabosa Sebugao, has encouraged bloggers to utilize social media for development. Sebugao was presiding over the office of opening, official opening, I beg your pardon, of Uganda Bloggers Association offices in Bukoto, Kampala, attended, uh, among others, bloggers across the country and renowned musician Moses Sadi, aka Baby Cool, among others. Minister, Government through the Minister of ICT and National Guidance is to ensure that the role of the media and bloggers is protected, respected and promoted. State Minister for ICT and National Guidance, Joyce Nabosa Sebogwao, was presiding over the opening of the Uganda Bloggers Association offices in Ibukoto near Kampala. The minister wants bloggers to utilize the social media for development purposes. On the issue of internet access, Sebugwao promised that the Ministry of ICT will endeavor to ensure internet access and affordability. The Ministry of ICT and National Guidance will endeavor to ensure internet access and affordability, the right to information and inclusion of marginalized groups. The government of Uganda will ensure that the role of the media and bloggers is protected. The renowned musician Moses Sali, alias Bebe Kool, commended bloggers for establishing the office and encouraged them to utilize the internet by talking about national development. Pass over the right information. We have a lot of programs coming up in the government, most especially the uh, Paris model. Go out there to the right offices, ask them for the information, be the first team to know the depth of the parish model, stand between the government and the people, go out there in your rooms, you know the beauty about blogging, you can blog in your bed, you can blog in your bathroom. The function attracted bloggers associations and prominent bloggers like Frank Gashumba among others. Salongo Freddy Kasibante compiled this report. There you have it, the Ministry of ICT promising uh, affordability of internet. Moving on from that, the Wakiso District Environment Officer has summoned a businessman who recently cleared 12 acres of a wetland in the district for a title processing company. Now, a foreman employed at the site disclosed that Wilberforce Semander was draining the wetland to pay for his personal businesses. 
details follow. 12 acres of wetland belt have been carved off Masoli wetland with a finger pointing at a local businessman who plans to set up a tile production plant. The alleged businessman is Wilba for Semanda, a resident of Wakiso. A foreman employed at Semanda's site only identified as Elias alleges that Wilba for Semanda was draining the wetland to pave way for his personal businesses. Mm. These are very powerful, they are highly connected, and they have resources, they can do whatever they are doing in a wetland like in Wakiso, is something they can do even far away in a dry land which is commensive and, uh, you know, advised, I mean, uh, which, is, which has no problem. And they are the people who have the capacity to do it, and they are the people who are degrading. So that's the dilemma now we are facing. The issue is a subject of debate at Wakiso district offices where the wetland officer, Veronica Nalunga, argues that the activity endangers the environment. Bricks, I, I, I've been told that they are not intended for selling, they are intended for use. For the, pro for, the, uh, for the intended project to be implemented, I think, in time, I have failed to get in, a, in, in, a, in a physical contact with the developer, apart from on phone. Semanda, who declined to avail himself physically, insists that he possesses a title for the land in question. Semanda was served an improvement notice summoning him to Wakiso District Environment Office for further investigation. He said if I don't want to go to his office to find them, then I should use my search from all the necessary offices. Or I use Google and I obtain the documents. The district wetland officer then uploaded all the field data to the Central Data Collection Center at NEMA for analysis. This data was collected using the newly launched state-of-the-art data collection technology. This modern data collection tool will be used to monitor and improve the wetland status in Uganda. Pathias Karekonda compiled this report for UBC. Today in history. It was on 1st October 1975 when then President of Uganda, Idi Amin, laid the foundation of Uganda House on Plot 4445 First Avenue in New York, USA. Idi Amin had gone to attend the 30th session of the United Nations General Assembly. This was a 14-story building that was built to host the Ugandan mission to the United Nations, Uganda Coffee Marketing Board, and Uganda Tourism Corporation office, and a restaurant. The remaining space was to be rented to raise revenue for Uganda. I smile when I think of you, Uganda, my home. My home, I dance when I look at you, Uganda, my home. Oh, my Uganda. I know with you I'll always stay forever. I know, I know, because I feel that we belong together, my home. MTM, we look forward to starting another exciting journey together to grow our home, Uganda.
OTV was the best decision James has ever made. Finding a good place to watch football was never easy, but it was costly until James discovered something big. Now he can finally enjoy the benefits of homegrown advantage with a decoder and one month of good TV value. For just 25,000 shillings, enjoy the world's biggest leagues and cap competitions. Go TV Uganda, love it. It's Freaky Friday from Airtel. Buy or gift, buy or give. Get freaky too. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to load a Freaky Friday bundle for you to enjoy the best offers on voice and data. To buy a bundle for friends and family, dial star 149 star 10 star 5 hash. Freaky Friday with Airtel. Buy or gift a bundle today. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to get started. Airtel, the smart phone network. Welcome back from that short commercial break. In more stories, State Minister for Environment, Beatrice Enoir, has advised the youth to embrace mindset change and redirection with respectful approach in the fight to mitigate climate change. Enoir was at Charlton Hotel where youth go green hosted a workshop highlighting youth contributions to environmental management. The signatory to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change that enabled it to draw nationally determined contributions to mitigate climate change. Through those contributions, the country targets all individual contributions that can reduce emissions and undertake climate change mitigation and adaptation. The youth play a big part in this process and is the reason Youth Go Green organized the workshop to assess Uganda youth contributions to updating the nationally determined contributions. We've been here struggling to understand how the youth can be relevant in the NDC process. And I'm happy that uh, the youth from all sectors of, 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 of society have been able to give their contributions. Those who are involved in agriculture, those who are involved in energy, those involved in, wa in, in waste uh, uh, um, recycling, and many others. And we've been able to understand that climate change needs urgent action, and so the youth have, or have contributed the policy brief that will be submitted to the Ministry of Water and Environment and eventually uh, uh, the government position will adopt it as the youth contribution to the NDC process. State Minister for Environment Beatrice Anwar offered counsel to the youth that can be used effectively in saving the environment. If all the energies of the youth and the number of the youth are directed into your key core demands will find a quicker result. And that's what I want to encourage you today as you move forward. Don't gang with everything. Strategize. Do be smart. Find out what those which are achievable and put your energy behind it. One at a go. Redirect what is another third main issue. Redirect your mindsets. The workshop was on the theme youth and nationally determined contributions a driving force for higher climate adaptation. In more news, legislators from the Budget and the Natural Resources Committees of Parliament are currently in the oil fields in the Alberta and Graben to ascertain the progress of the oil and gas project. Some of the key oil and gas installations in their itinerary include the visit to Total Energies, Tilenga Project, Kabale International Airport and the Kingfisher Project on the shores of Lake Albert. Details follow. The Environment and Natural Resources Committee with the Budget Committee of Parliament are here in the Albert and Graben on an oversight mission on oil and gas activities. We visited today the Telenga project and we've seen the progress of work that is going on. So far I'm impressed, so far so good. And what is happening is that um, with a few laws that will be coming in soon, we, uh, we've been told that uh, the final agreement will be signed to enable the production of oil by May 2025. So as a committee of parliament, 
Uh, we would, we should be happy to consider additional funding into the oil project, given what we have seen uh, yesterday and also today. Before heading to the Tilenga project in Bulisa district, the members of parliament started their five-day excursion with a visit of the Uganda Petroleum Institute Kigumba in Kriandongo district. The curriculum that we are delivering was designed together with our partners at IFP of France. They helped us design the curriculum, looked at the equipment to implement the curriculum, they helped us look, design the infrastructure that we are seeing now, especially the workshops. Kigumba is a premier institution set up by government to facilitate the training of locals who will in turn provide labor for oil and gas industry. The next destination was the Stanbic Agribusiness Incubator in Hoima Municipality. The training center seeks to empower farmers to produce quality agricultural products to satisfy the market demands and boost local content. We are getting farmers here to train them and prepare to produce food ranging from meat, from what, for the people who are working for the industry itself. We have interested ourselves in understanding the details, the communities, how are they going to benefit the local content aspects right through the value chain, the logistics aspects and the, the local people. We don't want to have farming here who are imported from outside when we have our local people who can do that. For us, there are commitments we made in the manifesto in, the, in, the, in relation to this sector and we come to follow up and see how these uh, uh, commitments are being implemented. According to the Petroleum Authority Uganda, the visit of the legislators to key oil and gas installations and projects is vital in expediting the capital-intensive downstream phase of oil and gas activities. They have come to look at the oil roads. They have come to look at the efforts we are making to empower farmers. Like now here where we are, it is an incubation center managed by Stambik. The Albertine Graben is the principal area for petroleum exploitation. So far, 40% of the area has been explored and 15% licensed. Uganda's oil and gas sector has progressed into development in preparation for its first oil in 2025. Sada Mubale, UBC News in the Albertine Graben. Thank you so much, Saddam. Minister of State for Tesla Affairs, Dr. Kenneth Ungalo Bote, has committed his support towards the completion of Butebo District New Administrative Block. The structure that has stalled for more than five years has forced some of the sector heads to operate under trees due to limited uh, space. Now, this was discovered during Dr. Obote's familiarization tour and inspection of government projects in the 13 districts that make up Tesla subregion. Butebo District started operating on 3rd July 2017 in old structures of Butebo sub-county after it was carved out of Palisa District, its mother district. Now the district is struggling to operate with limited office space, forcing some of the sector heads to work under trees, hence affecting service delivery. Oh, very unfortunate. At the beginning I began operating under a tree. I moved it to that semi-complete building and then we got that office space. And as I talk right now, the district executive, the speaker, they don't have an office. For those who are lucky to share the tiny office space, the district is also finding it challenging to observe standard operation procedures to stem the spread of the coronavirus. You find two, three people sharing a very small office. Then we have a block we took over and renovated where heads of department are squatting with the sector heads. So most of the time, if we are not hiring of, of space here, we convene our meetings under mango trees. The district hires office space outside the district for meetings at a cost of 100,000 shillings per meeting, which they say it is very expensive and tedious. We have a district executive committee meeting monthly, we have sectoral committee meetings uh, once in every, every two months. We have a council meeting every two months. We have technical planning committee meetings monthly. But also every week we hold top management meetings. 
The district requires now close to 2 billion shillings for the completion of the new administrative block in order to avert the future related vice. That building needs more and more money to tune of to complete it we need a more or something like 2 billion to have it complete and as a local government we shall still continue entirely depend on in, on central government to ensure that we have it completed Minister of State for Teso Affairs, Dr. Kenneth Ongalo Obote, who was in the district for his maiden tour, committed his total support towards the completion of the new administrative block. As a ministry, we sit down, we seek appropriation for that money from the budget committee, then it becomes very easy for us to say we are going to, to give you this much money. That obviously uh, the ministry is going to... Uh, make sure, no matter what we play, whether directly or indirectly by lobbying others to help the district to see that it completes its home and it moves into its home, it starts operating from there. The minister also inspected various projects in the district, which include Manyobe small-scale irrigation scheme and the works on the incomplete Komoro Toto Bridge that connects Butebo and the Bukedia district. Joseph Oko compiled this report for UBC News. The growing numbers of teenage pregnancies in Uganda are choking stakeholders with now many adolescent girls in disarray about where to go. The challenge is lack of information on sexual reproductive health and yet Uganda is gifted with a big number of active youth below the 30 years. The youth from various walks of life have commemorated the International Contraceptive Day with a call on government to increase youth-friendly services to avert such calamities like unwanted pregnancies which are on the rise. Details follow. Before COVID-19, we used to take in about anyway, anywhere between three to six girls a month. When the lockdown happened, one month into the lockdown, the phone calls that were coming in were overwhelming. And these were not phone calls because a girl is pregnant half the time. It was because of domestic violence. It was concerned parents. What are we going to this is one of the safe havens for adolescents who run away from their homes as a result of unexpected pregnancies. According to the center manager, Wakisa Ministries, the situation has been escalated by COVID-19 pandemic. Education sector and closing it has been one of the biggest challenges for us in teenage pregnancies. Adolescent pregnancies have grown. So now we are receiving anywhere from 20 calls a week. The program specialist adolescent youth, sexual reproductive health at the United Nations Fund for Population Activities, Alan Isizomu, was speaking at World Contraception Day event. The high unmet need for family planning among adolescents is also a key concern. So what this means, we have adolescents who would like to use contraceptives but are unable to actually access the contraceptives due to different barriers. And that means that uh, we having more pregnancies also out of the unmet need. World Contraception Day reminds us that every woman and girl has a right to freely and responsibly decide when and how many children to have. The use of modern contraceptive reduces maternal mortality, improves health outcomes for young mothers and their children, and reduces the cost associated to teen pregnancy. The current state of the country's reproductive health indicators demand for immediate action. It is a platform where we acknowledge and celebrate the champions of social change in this country. We are leveraging on the power of building communities to create the momentum to drive the much needed change in our various communities and the power actually lies with you, the young people. It may be a web-based tool, but it is way much more than just a web-based tool. A number of panelists at the youth webinar alleged that lockdowns due to COVID-19 have escalated reproductive health-related challenges. Oh, remember, when the government tries to close here and there, and now, uh, remember, some of, uh, some of the teenagers as we are close to go and access the 
uh, the, the service from the hospital, health centers, the transportation services, public services were uh, burned down. As a young person, of course, people will look at you, and more so if you do not look your age, for the few lucky, I'll say lucky few who do not look their ages, they will tell you you're too young to access such services, and then you, could, you should wait until you're older. Douglas Setumba compiled this report. Before the impact of COVID-19, police, along with Youth Integrated Development Organization, IIDO, embarked on a students and teacher sensitization campaign to prevent crime in schools. As Harun Amtesasila reports, the training scaled down the raise of crimes in Kisoro district. Youth Integrated Development Organization, IIDO, in partnership with Uganda Police, has spearheading mindset change and how to safeguard the youth through schools against crime clubs. Kisoro district. Our intervention in schools against crime had really moved a mile. We are so far having, we have uh, interacted with several of them, but we have seven key schools that we have gazetted. In Iksoro district, the program which was enrolled in 2005 was aimed at building future leaders. It's given us enlightenment, especially in our schools. Since we started with this organization, uh, we moved to schools. The time where the schools were still operational, and uh, we are taking them in a, uh, trainings on how to live uh, without committing crimes. Kuzira George from Youth Integrated Development Organization, YIDO, outlined the need to train youth in order to transform the society. It has helped us scale down on a number of crimes in our communities. Eventually, these young children, they become our ambassadors and they challenge the elderly community on how best to live together. How they relate to one another, uh, especially in uh, outside activities, like games, uh, debates, uh, and it has done good to us in Kisoro. Most of the schools are doing well. It's only the COVID, the lockdown that has caused a problem that schools are no longer operational. Learners are affected by school closure and poverty due to the COVID-19 pandemic. However, some of the hardships associated with lockdown are risk factors to violence and drug abuse in Kisoro district. We have had a challenge, especially during this pandemic of uh, COVID-19, but we've endeavored to keep a relevant hand with our youth, given their weight in our community. We have tried to have uh, online messages we have tried to have zoom meetings with some of them that are able to access the uh the the the, 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 the gadgets and we have also tried to have small meetings like the one you have witnessed today the main purpose of schools against crime club formation is to provide learners with an education foundation from which they can build successful independent lives haruna mutai sasira ubc a short commercial break and we'll be back with business news I smile when I think of you, Uganda, my home. My home, I dance when I look at you, Uganda, my home. Oh, my Uganda. I know with you I'll always stay forever. I know, I know, because I feel that we belong together, my home.
At MTM, we look forward to starting another exciting journey together to grow our home, Uganda. It's no secret that ICT makes learning easy. The strides made in our field couldn't be possible without it. And now we can watch our favorite show. Ah, my radio is my best friend. UCC provides an enabling regulatory environment and policy guidance for healthy competition. We also facilitate ease of doing business in the communications sector through licensing, standardization, spectrum management, tariff regulation, rural communication development and consumer empowerment. An informed consumer is an empowered consumer. UCC supports local content and innovations. Driving the development of a robust communication sector in Uganda is Uganda Communications Commission. It's Freaky Friday from Airtel. Buy or gift. Buy or give. Get freaky too. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to load a Freaky Friday bundle for you to enjoy the best offers on voice and data. To buy a bundle for friends and family, dial star 149 star 10 star 5 hash. Freaky Friday with Airtel. Buy or gift a bundle today. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to get started. Airtel, the smart Smartphone Network. You're welcome once again to UBC News tonight. Now, government has been urged to strengthen public-private partnerships while establishing reliable internet infrastructure. The general manager of Washio Data Center, James Biaduhanga, says safer data processing and protection services require a partnership between government and the private sector for sustainability. Digitization is really not a trend, it's not a fashion. It is global, that's where the world is heading, and we are part and parcel of the global world. A number of digitization efforts have since been undertaken as per the MOU, and these include provision of Zoom licenses to facilitate online meetings, webinars, and other communications for NEC, enrolling NEC on the unified messaging and collaboration system, a government-wide email and collaboration platform, and connecting NEC headquarters on the national backbone infrastructure, among others. The systems that we are launching, first we had to connect Next to the national backboard infrastructure that allows you to be on a very high, the, the fastest internet connection in Uganda. I don't think there's any telecom or any provider that has the speeds that NITA provides. It is also the cheapest, even if cost of internet is high, in uh, NITA we are the lowest as in the uh, market, cost of internet is about $280. NITA provides internet to make at $70. Installation of the EDMS will improve procurement, cash requisitions, leave management, and payroll management at NEC. This is a digital world, and we have for analog managers. Some of us cannot accept to be analog managers in the digital world. So we had to conform, we had to change. So that rapid shift to remote work dramatically accelerated uh, many digital transformations of the companies and as NEC, we could not allow to be, to be left behind. Uh, as you see, there were even changes, whether it is in the, the bank's system, shopping went online, even gyms became virtual. So who are we to, to remain in the old world? However, to realize the full benefits of the EDMS, all staff involved in particular processes have been encouraged to impress and use the system consistently in order to reduce turnaround time for service delivery. This initiative is very important, not only for NEC, but for the entire government entities. It gives them the opportunity to take advantage of the digital tools to create efficiency in operations. When they begin to use it, Paperwork is going to reduce, um, turnaround times are going to also uh, go down, eventually efficiency will be realized. So not only for NEC, 
as the NITA, we see it as something that is important for every entity in government. Established under the NITA U Act of 2009, the National Information Technology Authority of Uganda was set up to coordinate, promote, monitor and support information technology development in both the public and private sector within the context of national, social and economic development. Wadulo Makanold, reporting for UBC News. Minister of Energy and Mineral Development is revising relevant energy laws geared at ensuring sufficient power production, supply and consumption in order to boost the energy sector. Minister for Energy and Mineral Development Ruth Nankabira emphasized the importance of the energy while launching state-of-the-art multi-billion building for electricity regulatory authority in Kampala. Uganda Electricity Regulatory Authority has officially received its mouth billion building from the contractor Rocco Construction. Minister for Energy and Mineral Development Ruth Nankabira opened the building at Lugogo, a structure she described as the state of the art in compliance with modern construction standards. <laughs> that this building exhibits, it is a testimony that we can have reliable and affordable source of energy. Through tapping what God gave us, before you even think about anything else, but God gave us those resources, the waters that we have in the rivers, and the, in a, the, the sun, that we have it. it is here that Minister Nankara revealed that relevant electricity laws are under review to match the power needs of the country. The reintroduction of the energy fund. And that energy fund will help us now have money, that account, which we can use to do feasibility studies without wasting time, where we can invest where we can come in and help on the distribution side. So once that is reintroduced, we are going to see um, a more bright future. The chairperson Uganda Electricity Regulatory Authority, Dr. Sarah Wasagari Kanavi, points out that government is striving to ensure adequate, efficient and affordable power supply for economic transformation of the country. Now as the tariffs go down, you all know that electricity is an input in every, almost every aspect of production in our economy. So which means the cost of production contributed by electricity will go down. And that will mean that the prices of commodities, services will also go down. And that will improve the welfare of the of Uganda. The Chief Executive Officer, Uganda Electricity Regulatory Authority, Engineer Ziria Tibara, Engineer Ziria Tibarawako referred to the newly acquired premises as a major milestone in terms of better service delivery. Initiatives by government to ensure that the price of electricity is continuously uh, uh, reduced. And uh, this, we cannot say, we will it alone as government because to reduce the price of electricity, it means that we create a conducive environment so that all the power that is generated is, is utilized by the, the population. So there are various government initiatives. One of them is implementing the uh, hydropower projects using public funds so that the resultant price of electricity is relatively low. The Ministry of Works and Transport has been challenged to ensure that construction of buildings adheres to the modern standards in terms of safety and power efficiency. Adiana Kote, UBC. In our sports stories, national soccer team coach Michael Milutin has added nine professional players to the Uganda Cranes team currently in camp ahead of a double-headed 2022 World Cup qualifier against Rwanda next week. Uganda visits Rwanda on the 7th of October before the two face off in the second leg three days later at the St. Mary Stadium in Wakiso District. The nine that coach Mitchell has added are goalkeepers Ismail Watenga and Charles Lukwago defenders Isaac Muleme, Mustafa Kiza and Timothy Awani.
midfielders Khalid Aucho, Moses Weiswe and Tadeo Luanga, and striker Fahad Bayo. Now Uganda is third in Group E that is topped by Mali on four points. Kenya in second is second on two like Uganda that is third because of goal difference while Rwanda is bottom. Only the top side qualifies to the next stage of 10 teams with only the five expected to make the grade for the World Cup in Qatar next year. That's all we had for you for now. We'll take a, we'll take a look at the weather forecast. A very warm welcome to the Weather Centre. My name is Molin Kenyana. Time now to go through our weather report. Now, rainy systems, very intense rainy systems continue to affect the country's weather today. And by this evening, we did see rains mostly across parts of central, across the Lake Victoria Basin areas around Midwestern, Hoima, Mubende, Nitiana, that area parts of Wakiso did receive rains and this was attributed from what we're seeing uh, from our satellites. You can see that we did have that Congo air mass that was moving in towards the country and that was bringing us mo most, mostly rains across the western part of the country. Now that is coupled with uh, the moist southeasterly winds that are also coming in from the Indian Ocean towards the country. Not to mention also the fact that we have Lake Victoria also enhancing what weather activities across this region and that was mostly towards the Lake Victoria Basin as well as parts of central that did receive much of the rains for this evening. But perhaps even tonight, we're likely to have that system continue even into tomorrow morning. But to be precise, let's take a look at our Saturday forecast. Well, in the morning, we will start off with rainy conditions, mostly in form of scattered showers. Those will be across the Lake Victoria Basin, extending all the way up to parts of central and also up to northwestern parts of the country. But elsewhere, we will be looking at mostly intervals of sunny and cloudy conditions. Now, later in the afternoon, we are forecasting scattered showers still. We'll see those extending all the way up to the western stretch, also parts of southwestern Uganda, as well as uh, continuing through West Nile. But it looks like we're going to maintain those sunny intervals that will be across the Karamoja region, as well as parts of eastern Uganda. Now, daytime highs, we are forecasting a maximum of 27. That will be across Kampala. Still a quite a hot day forecast for the Karamoja region. We we'll see temperatures going up to 30. We do expect uh, 28. That will be across central. But also quite cool weather for Kabale Highlands. We're forecasting a maximum of 23 degrees centigrade. Now, for the rest of the cities we have for you outside Uganda, we are forecasting sunny intervals that will be across Nairobi as well as Dubai. But we're starting to see temperatures go down across Dubai. We're forecasting a maximum of uh, 39 degrees centigrade. And also rains are forecast for Paris as well as London. Still cold weather for London. We are forecasting a maximum of uh, 16 degrees centigrade. And that nicely brings us to the end of tonight's weather report. Thank you very much for keeping us company. My name is Molin Kenyana. I wish you a blessed weekend. So much more in Kenya now for the wonderful updates on the weather forecast. Now remember to always, I guess, carry an umbrella because we're in our wet season. My name is Sharon Chomdisha. Thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely night from the team and I.